If you've ever exported data from a system, you know how challenging and time-consuming it can be to clean it up in Excel. Some studies say we spend as much as 80% of our time cleansing data. So in this video, I'm going to share several tips for cleaning up a report that is exported from a popular accounting system called QuickBooks. We'll first look at the manual approach, and then I'll show how to automate the entire process to save you tons of time. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start with this export of our bank register. And here I am in the QuickBooks test environment where I got the file by going to the bank register and then clicking the export to Excel button to download the file. And there are several issues with this sheet that we need to clean up. So we're just going to start from the top here. The first one is we have this merged cell up here with all of this data in it. Now, if you don't need this information, you could just right click delete this row or keyboard shortcut is control minus. I would just get rid of it. However, I'm going to hit control Z because I do want to keep it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just unmerge this. I'm just going to select cell A1 here, go up to the home tab and then just uh, click the merge and center button and that will unmerge the cell. Now, you can see that everything here is in cell A1, but we can't really see it. And that's because the text is wrapped. So we're also going to remove the wrap text and now we can see all the information. And this has some weird formatting here. If you look in the form of the bar, you can see that there's a lot of space between the words here and the three really components that we have in this one cell. And these look like spaces, but they're actually tabs. If you kind of select here with the mouse, you can see as I'm going across, it kind of jumps there. And these are tabs. So one thing we can do with this is use text to columns. I'm just going to select cell A1 go to the data tab on the ribbon, and we're going to choose text to columns. And then here we're going to choose delimited, we're going to hit next. And then here you can see that it's already decided that there's tabs here. And you can see all of those being separated here. Now, if we choose treat consecutive delimiters as one, that will just treat those as one, and then we'll just have uh, three cells. We also have the colon as another delimiter. So I'm just going to type colon here for the other, and then that will separate the numbers from the text. We'll go ahead and hit finish, and then that's going to separate all of those into individual cells. So if we did want to use this value or this value here for some calculations, we now have that number in a cell. The next issue we have is these dates in column A. These might look like dates, they might smell like dates, but they're actually not dates. And one quick way to tell that is if we select a cell and then hit the format drop down here, you can see that we have the date repeating here in all of these different number formats. This lets us know that this is not a date. It's actually just stored as text. Now, one quick way to fix this, if you just have one cell with the date in it, is you can double click here, hit F2 on the keyboard, and then hit enter. Excel will reevaluate this value and then convert it to a date. We can now see that it's a date type format. And if we hit the drop down again, we can see we have the number value for the date and then the different date formats here. Now, we don't want to have to go hit F2 and enter on all of these cells. And there's several ways to convert these dates, but one relatively easy trick that I like is I'm first going to hit Control Shift down arrow here to select all of these cells with dates. Then I'm going to hit Control H to open up Find and Replace. And I'm just going to replace the separator character in the dates, which is a forward slash. So I'm going to type forward slash here for find what, and then type forward slash for replace with. So we're going to find and replace the exact same character. We'll hit replace all. That's going to make those replacements. And when it does that, it forces Excel to reevaluate the values in the cells and convert them to dates. So if we jump down here to this cell, we can see that it is now a date value. Moving on to column B, you can see that we have some errors in these cells here denoted by that green triangle. And these errors are numbers stored as text. So all these numbers are actually stored as text. Now, if you're doing some type of lookup formula to another sheet, you might want to convert these to numbers because any type of lookup formula will need the data types to match exactly. So one trick for this is we can first just select any cell that contains one of these errors. Then uh, hit control space on the keyboard. That's going to select the entire column and it will move the little air box right up here to the top. And we can still click on it and choose convert to number. And that's going to convert all of the numbers stored as text in this column to numbers. The next issue with this sheet is you'll notice that the row heights are different for almost every single row. And that's because there's wrapped text in this account column and many of the other columns that are causing the row heights to be different. 
Now, this is a personal preference, but I typically don't like it. And one quick way to remove it is just select all the cells by clicking this button here. And then right up here, we're gonna hit wrap text, and then we're gonna hit wrap text again. So hit it twice, that will apply it, and then remove it from all of the cells. And then of course, since we have all of the cells selected, we can just double click anywhere between the columns, and that will auto fit the column widths. Now QuickBooks exports these reports with a small font that can be difficult to read. It's a size eight Arial font. Of course, we will quickly want to change that, just select all cells. We'll change this to an 11, and then we can change this to the uh, theme font, Aptos Narrow, and that'll just make the report easier to read. Next, we have this account column, and it contains some sub accounts in it. We might want to split these out so we can analyze this further. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just delete column K because I don't need this column. There's actually no data in it. And then we're gonna select column J. We'll go to the data tab on the ribbon and choose text to columns. Here we're gonna choose delimited, hit next. And then here in other, we're going to choose the separator, which is a colon. So I'm just gonna type in colon here. You can see that's going to split this into columns. That's all we need. We can hit finish. And now we have new columns with our sub accounts. And of course, we might want to add titles to these columns as well. And I'll just quickly use the Format Painter to copy over that header formatting to these other headers and expand the column widths. And QuickBooks exports these as the old XLS file type, which is in compatibility mode. And it's always best to use the new file type. So to do that, I'm gonna hit F12 on the keyboard to open the Save As dialog. And then right here, we're just gonna choose excelworkbook.xosx, which is the new file type. Of course, you can rename the file, hit save, and that will convert it to the new file type. Now it's still in compatibility mode. In order to get it out of compatibility mode, just close the file and reopen it. So that was more of the manual approach to cleaning up this data. And it's good to know all of these techniques but let's look at how we can automate it. So I'm gonna jump over to just a blank new workbook here, and we're gonna use Power Query for this. So I'm gonna do the data tab on the ribbon. Uh, from Get Data, I'm gonna choose From File, and then From Excel Workbook. I'm then gonna to navigate to the folder that contains my uh, downloads, which is right here, and I'm gonna use this XLS file. This is the original one. We'll say Import. And then from the navigator, we're gonna choose Worksheet, and we'll say Transform Data. And that's going to open up the Power Query window with a preview of our data. Now for this first cell here, I'm just gonna say I don't need it for this scenario. So what I'm gonna do is click right here. I'm gonna choose remove top rows to just remove that entire row. I'm gonna type a one in here and hit enter. That will remove that row. And now this is my header row and I need to bring it up one row. So I'm gonna again hit this button and use first row as headers. And that will bring that row up to the top. And as you can see, it also does some automatic data conversions. So Power Query has automatically detected this is a column of dates and it has changed this to a date data type, which we can see right here from this dropdown. The column to the right is still detected as text and that beca that's because it does contain some text here. But if we wanted to convert all these to numbers, we can just change this to whole number. We'll just say add new step for now. Now there is an error here where we do have text. We could just right click here, choose replace errors, and then we'll replace all those errors with null values, which just means a blank in Power Query. So blank cell and hit okay to clean that up. And then finally, if we go over to the account column where we split out our accounts, I'm gonna right click here and choose split column by delimiter. Instead of a space, we're going to choose custom and then just type a colon in here. We'll say add each occurrence and hit okay. That splits all of those out into those three account columns. Again, I didn't need this added in banking column, so I can right click remove that. And now we've done all of our transformations. So we'll go home tab, close and load. And that's going to output a new sheet to this workbook with our cleaned up data. And the reason this is fully automated is that we don't need to do those steps again. Let's say we rerun this export next week and we have this new file here. I'm just gonna drag that file into the existing folder that our query points to. I'm gonna hit replace file in this destination. Then we're gonna jump over to Excel. And in our table here, we're gonna right click anywhere and choose refresh. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. And that's going to rerun the query and refresh it. And what that does when we refresh it, if we jump back to the query here, 
it reruns all of the steps that we just created here in our query to clean up the data. So it does all of that work for us automatically on the refresh, and then it outputs the new results to the table. So in this video, we looked at how to clean up data exports with both manual and automated approaches. Both techniques are good to know, but Power Query can save you a ton of time if these are tasks you do frequently. We have online courses that will help you become a pro with Power Query, and I'll link those up in the description below. And if you want to learn more time-saving tricks with Excel, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.